Hi everyone, welcome. Solomon's Tales, continuing on again. We left it, let's move on. Uh, Solomon had been in that new bar, the guy Chris was running and met this girl named Elle. Seemed to be a hostess. The group who'd uh, got this new bar were a Bangkok crowd, possibly Australians. Um, I think Chris was Australian. And this girl, Elle, was, works in Bangkok as some sort of hostess, not as a bar girl. Quite posh, very pretty. It's in Solomon's mind. Anyway, uh, Solomon's back to room. Ning and the girls had moved out, gone back to their room. And then Ning's fellas turned up, so she's gone. Boom. Just disappears, as she does. Frozen, the same. She's up in Bangkok, or somewhere around the country with her boyfriend that's come from abroad so Solomon's pretty much on his own no sight of uh, Sue the boss of where he's staying he still owes his rent and bike money gotta pay that but no cashier's not fussed so no problem but he's pretty much on his own he's got yeah, not many friends he's, uh, suddenly there's no girls about bit of a shock <clears throat> but he's he wants to try and find this job as a manager. It's going to be the best chance for him. But no luck so far. Sometimes if you just hit it too much, banging on doors, it just you, you just don't get anywhere. So he's going to leave it for a few days. He's got a few pool contests. And he's got this girl, Elle, in his mind. Um, and he's beginning to dip into his savings a bit, which is not good. So he needs to earn some money. And later that day, is the contest in Soy 8 that he's always goes to. Uh, but there's also another bar up off the back of Second Road towards Soy Bikay that's got a sometimes two or three matches, depends how many people are in the bar. So he's hoping to do the Soy 8 one and shoot up to the other one and see if he can catch maybe the last match. So, evening comes, been out the usual, had a walk around, had some food. Into Soy 8, enters the contest as usual, quite a few people there. Plays reasonably well, gets all the way through, gets to the last two. Gets beaten by a complete novice with so much luck it's untrue. Uh, nothing he can do about it, complete flukes this, this guy and he loses. But he gets second, 4,000 bars. Great, he's got some money. Right, out, jumps on, took his bike this one, jumps on his bike straight up to the other bar and luckily he arrives, they're just finishing the first match. There's quite a few people in there. In fact, there's more in there than the other bar. This could be really good. Thousand mark entry, usual rules. Doesn't recognize the people, there's, it's all new faces. Has no idea. The table's pretty standard. He's played in this bar before and he has won in this bar before, so but strange not having frozen in his corner or Ning. You know, he's got no backup there at all. Anyway, cut a long short story short. Battles his way through. Comes out victorious. He wins. And he wins easily. He cruises through. Absolutely cruises through. Um He's getting quite tactical now in the way he plays the killer pool. He's learnt lots of little tricks and tips. And, um, yeah, he wins. There's uh, 11,000 baht prize for him. That's 15,000 baht in one night. He's like, that's it, I've got slush fund money to play around with. And it's about half ten in the evening. He's like, that's great, brilliant. And he thinks, right, and he's just got this L, this girl L in his mind, and he thinks, well, it's a bit late, I've got the bike with me. He thinks, tell with it. And he's cuts through the back lanes and comes out, sort of jaunty at the end of second row, and comes back round, dives down behind Marine Disco and parks his bike there, I think it's 10 baht. Walks through the lane, 
soy, I think it's soy diamond or soy BJ, soy BJ. Comes out onto Walking Street, flicks right, across the road, goes in the bar, Chris's bar. Now it still hasn't had the big launch, but you walk in expect. You know, there's girls outside, three or four girls. It's empty again, absolutely empty. He walks in, it's like half 10, 11 at night. Chris is at the bar, there's nobody playing snooker. L up at the back again with another girl talking. And he's like, what on earth? This bar, they've got to advertise or do something. Anyway, walks across the bar, see Chris, hi Chris. And Chris is like, ah, oh, really glad to see him. It's a customer. And he orders a drink and he buys one for Chris. And he said, Chris, what's happening? You know, there's just, you know, customers, what's, what's going on? And he's, we've got problems, he said, the group have got problems with the license and the local police and bits and pieces. He said, stuff's not getting put in place. Um, he says, I don't know the full story at the moment. We're still waiting. We haven't set the launch, but we've got problems or they've got problems with their, one of the bars they've got in Bangkok. He said, it's just, it's not great. So there's no money at the moment for advertising and local TV promotions and pushing it. He said, we're just having to just tick over. So I was like, wow. Anyway, they just then just chat about other things, and Simon was like, "Any news anywhere that anyone's got a job?" And he's like, "No, don't really know anyone, um, especially around Walking Street." He said, "I haven't heard anything, but I'll let you know." Anyway, the conversation goes across to this girl L, and Solomon says to Chris, "What's the score with this girl?" So, and Chris says, "She works." One of my partners in Bangkok, she works in a bar as a hostess, meet and greet girl. She's quite um, at market, he says. She doesn't go with customers. She just pulls the people in the bars, and they're quite high-end bars in Bangkok. And she just chats to people. Um, and uh, he says, I think she had possibly a fling with one of the bosses in the, in the past. Maybe they were boyfriend, girlfriend. But she still works up there and she's come down here to help. And someone is like, I really like her. She's really pretty. I'd love to uh, try my luck. And Chris is like smirks and sort of laughs. and like, you got no chance. <laughs> and someone has said, so you don't mind if I try my luck with Elle? And he said, no, as long as if we do get customers in, she's got to work. He said, so you, as long as you buy her drinks and no problem. Go for it. So I was like, oh. he said, what time are you closing tonight? And Chris is like, well, probably two o'clock. Okay. Anyway, so he grabs his drink. He says, I'm going to go and chat to her. And he walks over. This other girl's with Elle and he sits down, hi girls. And uh, Elle sort of says something to this other girl and she just gets up and walks off. Ooh, okay. So I said, do you want a drink? And Elle's like, yep, yeah. <laughs> that's a must. So she walks off, gets a drink, comes back. And they just get chatting. They have a good old chat. And Solomon's like, I'm not mucking around. Let's, I don't want to waste my time. This, you know. He says, you never go with customers. And she goes, no. And he says, no boyfriend. No. What's the score, you know? And I'd love to take you out. And she's like, I, uh, I'm single. I, I just work, save money. And uh, not really looking for a partner and so I was like oh he says well you working every night and she's yep yeah, at the moment with this bar every night and Solomon is like mm, okay this is, I'm gonna have to work on this girl he says how about I take you out for lunch you don't work till at the moment in the afternoons and I was like mm. and Solomon says what do you like do you like street food do you like sit you know or do you like restaurants or she goes oh, I prefer he's in a restaurant she says, but, uh, yeah, okay. You take me to a restaurant, we'll go to a restaurant. She says, I quite like seafood. Uh, okay, that's expensive. She says, I've seen one just on the front here, along on the beach road, there's a couple. She said, um, yeah, you can take me for lunch. I don't mind you buying me lunch, she says. And he's like, mm, yeah, okay. All right. He said, yeah. He said, tomorrow, lunch. Give me a time and she's sort of 
Um, she says, I'll ring you when I'm up and about and we'll arrange it then. So she's got his number. If she hasn't, he just gives it her. <laughs> he says, oh, okay. She's like, probably sleep all, you know, late. And he thinks, I might get a phone call, I might not then. He says, okay. Anyway, so they have a drink, carry on chatting a bit. He says, right, I've got to go, I've got the bike with me, I've got to shoot off. She says, okay, I'll ring you tomorrow. Off he goes, says goodbye to Chris. Bar still empty. Walking street's busy. It's just small front door, it's just a couple of girls outside, they're not doing their job. They're not, no energy of these girls outside at all. Waste of time. So, out he goes. He said, I'm not even going to drink in Walking Street tonight. He says, Psh. and he, he been, he's been there now quite a few months and he starts to see familiar faces, people who are living there and the girls, they recognise people from different bars. So he's, all these pool bars he's going around. You see the foreigners in there with, with a Thai girlfriend and those girls start you know, get recognised. So a few people sort of smile at him and say hi. Round the lane, gets on his bike, back to room. On his way up to his room, he thinks, I'll pop in, see if the boss is there. And he goes up the first stairs, in through the door, and the boss is there, Sue's there, but the Chinese Thai tall guy husband is also there. Again, he looks like he's drunk, and the Solomon's like, oh, she's not going to want to talk to me. But he thinks, oh, hell with it, I owe, you know, he walks in and, hi, and she starts talking to him, hi, how are you? He says, I've got to talk my rent out with you and bike. She says, oh, okay, yeah, you want to pay now? And he's like, yeah, yeah, pulls out money, pays for a month, and the bike gives it to her. She says, thanks very much. She said, you okay? He said, yeah, he says, I'm just wandering around. I'm actually trying to find myself some work now. And at this point, this tall, husband of hers, he's a little bit half cut, leans forward and introduces himself and I can't remember the guy's name but anyway he's got glasses, he's ears tall, six foot, six foot two, he's quite slim but a little bit drunk. He leans forward and starts introducing himself and talking and Solomon's like yeah hi how are you on stay upstairs and yeah and the guy then, he just sort of stops talking to Solomon and gets another, leans over it and cash in another drink. And Sue sort of lifting her eyebrows and looking at Solomon and Solomon's like, this is awkward. And and she never responded to him saying, I'm looking for work. She just, she's just watching the husband. Anyway, Solomon's like, mm. all the girls over in the, by the goldfish bowl are right in the corner of the way. You think this guy could be trouble. And Solomon's like, I'm getting out of here. I've paid my rent, paid for the bike. She says, Tell us who. Says goodbye to the guy as well. He just sort of grunts and off to the room. So, quite a good day. He's won two pool contests. Um, he's sort of made a date with Elle. He's paid his rent. He sort of met the husband of Sue, the boss of this uh, soapy massage where he's living. Mm, not a bad day, still no ning, no frozen. He's going back to his room, lonely. <laughs> it's very quiet because there's, there's like three floors above, all with rooms, and he's the only person in the whole place. There's no, maybe there's a customer in one room somewhere, but there's it's a bit of an empty place, empty feeling. Old carpet running down the corridor, very quiet, but beats that other room with all the noise from the Atlantic bar and stuff. Anyway, that's it. It's room, day over. El is in his mind, such a pretty girl. He's not met a girl like this before because what is a hostess girl over there? Meet and greet. He's not come across this type of girl before. She really dresses nice, really upmarket clothes. Just the manicured nails, her hair, not too much makeup. Really, really nice, speaks good English. She's like a really good catch. And it's like he's going to have to date her, just like a normal relationship. Looks like he's going to have to wine and dine her. 
which is strange when you're in Patea very strange to find a girl like this um, well maybe not but for Solomon it's strange and you think, hmm. so he has a, a good old night <laughs> dreams about hell next morning comes he gets up quite early he's up at about 8 out walk onto the beach walk along the beach he's going to head along and cut out and find some breakfast somewhere and uh, gorgeous day people are milling around it's still quiet nothing seems to open till about 10 o'clock but food there's always food open 24 hours a day wanders, wanders along the road along the beach road up breakfast walks back round and he's like well, what should I do now I'm just going to be sat around waiting for a phone call that might come or might not come and he thinks yeah, really could do with uh, maybe going knocking on a few doors and see if there's any bar work what areas he saw, I've not really done Jomtium I've not explored Jomtium so he thinks maybe I'll jump on my bike and go over to jump to him it's only like 15 minutes um, and the chances are that owl's going to sleep in till 1 2 o'clock and it'll be a 3 4 o'clock lunch and he thinks yeah plenty of time so he does he walks back to the room doesn't even bother going up to the room just grabs his bike doesn't put a helmet on jumps on the bike down Beach Road, go all the way along Beach Road to the Walking Street sign entrance, flicks round to the left on the one way and then off to the right towards Jomtian. Blow me down, he's gone round to the right, heading towards Jomtian, police checkpoint, and he's pulled. No helmet, ticket. And he's learning this now, it's like ah, oh. and he hasn't got the, he hasn't put the helmet under the seat of the bike or on the bike, it's in the room. And he's like, oh dear. Pulls out 200 baht, pays the fine there and then. Got no helmet, he's like, no, oh, I'm just gonna have to go for it. And he just rides off, pays the fine, rides off, no helmet. Lucky, no more checkpoints. That's not a good sign. Anyway, comes down to Jomtian. He doesn't really know Jomtian that well. He's been there a few times, but not much. 15 years ago, there wasn't that many bars on the way in down to the beach. It was a few and along the front anyway it goes down to the beach wanders along the front a little bit sees a, a few restaurants and cafes but he's not really noticing a lot of beer bars there was some on the corner he sees a sign winchester club and that, that rings a bell he's thinking what's that winchester club i've heard about that um he thinks well, i'm not going to have a look at this and he turns left for the side up this road oh, I don't know maybe a quarter of a mile and on the left sign Winchester Club it's like a uh, big building pulls the bike and there's a few bikes parked there and he's thinking well, what is it he hasn't got a clue but somebody's mentioned this to him before he thinks it's got to be a bar parks his bike and he thinks right in he walks front door in and there's a few bar areas in there a lot of seating areas Goes in, it seems quite there's a couple of guys with girls sat in, like alcoves and things. Pokes his head around the corner and there's a big bar and he thinks, ah, there's a couple of girls sat by the bar. Over he goes to the bar, not too far from these two girls, barmaid. He's like, oh, just give me a soft drink, just give me a Coke. He said, oh, I'm riding the bike, I'm not really in the mood for drinking too much. And um, these two girls straight over. One girl, quite tall, usual black eyes, long black hair, really, really attractive girl, great English. Um, and this girl's called Lee. Other girl, can't remember, smaller girl, not as a good English. And he's chatting to them and he's drinking. And he's like, what is this place? Turns out it's a sort of, um, there's rooms upstairs, aerobics. phone call always the way so there's two girls in this winchester it's um yeah aerobics 
rooms upstairs for a couple of hours. So, short time bar. It's quite a big place. Um, and there's a sign up saying Sunday lunches, free barbecue, free food, Sundays. That's good. Very good. Anyway, these two girls, the little girl, suddenly like, oh, another customer's in, off she goes, boom, leaves this Lee with, with Solomon. Um, and he's chatting away to her. <coughs> Excuse me, she's a lovely, lovely girl, really nice. And she's sort of, she's not pushing for a drink, she's not pushing, she's just nice chat. And it must be, what, must be coming up for lunchtime, he's not heard anything from L. Um, but anyway, Solomon's not in the market for a hedonistic holiday. So, he's very tempted. <laughs> but no, he doesn't buy her a drink. He drinks his Coke and he's like, well, now I've seen what the place is like. Um, yeah, and nice to meet you. Lee, hmm, pretty girl. She says, come back. He says, Sunday, free food. She said, yeah, come, it's busy, really good. He said, oh, okay, maybe I will. Pays his drink, says his goodbyes, out. He thinks, right, I'm gonna have a look around Jomtian. And just as he gets out to the bike, phone rings, it's hell. I'm up and about ready for lunch, you know, if we go meet restaurant, seafood, beach road, describes where and he's like, oh, okay, yep, yeah, no problem. And he's in Jomtian, right, I've got to ride all the way back now. So, uh, but he saw what the Winchester Club was like. And he heads back, works his way all the way around, back round to Beach Road, around the one-way system, parks up at the restaurant, and no sign of her, but she'll be along in a minute. And we'll leave it there. Um, mm, L, now there's a Lee. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's all money though, isn't it? He's got a bit of money from the winning those two contests, so that'll keep him for a few days there's another pool contest coming up in two days time for him and he's like mm, L time to wine and dine her <laughs> oh what's he like he's going to get himself into trouble I'm sure or oh, he's going to he's going to fall in love catch you on the next one ta -da.